On Tuesday, April 4th, 2023, Donald Trump entered a Manhattan courtroom and pled not guilty to 34 crimes. It's one step in a long process that will likely lead to the first criminal trial of a former U.S. president. Trump acted in unprecedented ways, and now there is an unprecedented response to how he acted. Trump lost the... Well, that's just biased, and as always, a Vox Lipton media. The first person to do a crime? No. The first person, the first person to, to go and get fucking go to court for a crime. <laughs> the bunch of people did crimes before him. This is fucking dumb. Bias dumb fuck. President in response to how he acted. Trump lost the 2020 fucking election fraud. and left office in January of 2021. And since then, lawyers have been gathering evidence Boom. in four separate criminal investigations. They are trying to figure out if Trump broke the law. Bro, you guys have been, how am I glazing? Bro. It is objectively biased to say that that nobody else has done crimes before than this guy. Okay? So it is. And if he did, what to do about it? To understand these four different cases, you need to know a little bit about how criminal investigations in the U.S. work. In the first phase, investigators gather evidence. They might interview witnesses, review surveillance footage, comb over financial records, or review texts and emails. They show that evidence to a randomly selected group of citizens called a grand jury. The grand jury's job isn't to decide if anyone is innocent or guilty. They just listen to the evidence and basically decide if it makes sense. If 12 of them think it does, they'll issue an indictment. Only then can the prosecutor file charges. The accused can plead guilty, in which case the whole thing goes straight to sentencing. If they plead not guilty, then the case goes to trial, and a jury hears the evidence and has to come to a unanimous decision one way or the other. Obviously, a simplification, and there's a ton of variations in different states and jurisdictions, but that's the gist. So where do things stand with those four Trump investigations? Let's start with the hush money. The state of New York has officially charged Trump with falsifying business records in the first degree. In its statement of facts, the prosecutors write that he repeatedly and fraudulently falsified New York business records to conceal criminal conduct that hid damaging information from the voting public during the 2016 presidential election. Right. This bank statement from Trump's former lawyer, Michael Cohen, shows that he withdrew funds in October of 2016. He then used that money to pay an adult film actress to stay quiet about an affair that she said... So, guys, I'm gonna keep it about I'm watching this video just like you guys. All I see is the circumstantial evidence. Because I, I'm not a glazer. I'm saying is that all I have is an amount withdrawn and then a picture of some lady. What? I'm just saying. Other than now, this is all circumstantial. To pay an adult film actress to stay quiet about an affair that she said she'd had with Donald Trump a few years earlier. A year later, after Trump had won the presidency, he wrote several checks to reimburse Cohen. In his accounting records, Trump designated these as payments for legal services, which isn't exactly accurate. This is some of the evidence that led to Trump's recent indictment and his not guilty. How, how do they know that? Plea. In order to convict Trump of a felony, the district attorney Alvin Bragg, he has to prove not just that he falsified these Guys. records in order to cover up the payments, but he has to prove that he did so in order to advance or cover up some other crime. But I think that these particular allegations against Trump are pretty far afield of the really serious allegations that justify going after a former president. You know, the allegations that he tried to steal an election. In Georgia, the votes are still being counted. CNN has just projected President-elect Biden the winner in Georgia. I believe that the numbers that we have presented today are correct. There is a phone call between Donald Trump and Brad Raffensperger, the Secretary of State of Georgia, the top elections official in Georgia. The people of Georgia are angry, the people of the country are angry, and there's nothing wrong with saying that, you know, uh, that you've recalculated. You should want to have an accurate election, and you're a Republican. We believe that we do have an accurate election. No, I, no you don't. No, no you don't. You don't have, you don't have, not even close. Look, all I want to do is this. I just want to find uh, 11,780 votes. If they magically came up with 11,780 Trump votes that didn't actually exist, 
that would have been enough to steal the election in Georgia. A special grand jury in Georgia has heard the evidence and recommended multiple indictments. But we don't know yet if District Attorney Fannie Willis is going to take things further. The Georgia team isn't the only one trying to figure out if Trump's behavior after the election broke any laws. Federal Special Counsel Jack Smith's team is looking into... It doesn't matter who it is. I don't like it when people take evidence and take pieces and connect the dots on their own and make conclusions that will be proven or disproven in court. Let the court system go through and stop making your dumbass take on this shit. I don't want to hear it, you fucking libtard. Right. Similar questions. There's been a lot of attention on this question of fake electors. The state's electors cast their votes for whoever won the most votes in their state. If Biden wins the state, then Biden's electors win the state, and he gets that many electoral votes. The Trump team in key swing states, they tried to assemble slates of alternative electors, even though Biden won the state. They were asking me to facilitate having the electors meet uh, and sign some sort of document. These people were going to, in violation of the lockdown, sneak in and stay overnight and then allegedly kind of cast their vote in the Michigan Capitol. Security wouldn't let them in, so they signed the document in the basement of the state's Republican headquarters, then sent it off to DC. Trump's team led similar efforts in six other states where Biden won. A grand jury in D.C. has been hearing evidence in this case for months, but they haven't voted yet. But we appear to be in, in the closing stages of this. The same oh, okay. special prosecutor is also looking into a fourth case against Trump. Unprecedented FBI search on former President Donald Trump. Trump's Mar-a-Lago property has been raided by the FBI. This inventory list from the raid shows that they found dozens of documents labeled classified, confidential, and top secret. There's a Washington Post report last year that some of this involved nuclear documents. There has been some reporting that some of these related to intelligence that could have exposed certain U.S. informants or sources and that basically the intelligence community did consider this really important stuff that should not have been hanging out at Mar-a-Lago. Right now, a grand jury in D.C. is still hearing all this evidence. As president, Donald Trump didn't just say outrageous things. He acted in ways that no president ever had before. Now that he's no longer in office, it's time to figure out Whoa. if any- Guys, I'm watching it. Guys, guys, I call out things when I don't think they're right. I don't talk about this because I'm on the video. I don't know a problem with whatever happened next. All this, I, I agree with it. Like, I watch a video as much as you. Why do you mean a glaze and it is already presented, presented a certain way that, that can be disproven? And other things, like, dude, you're so dumb. This is just weird. Dude, you need, you, what you need to do, dude, okay, in politics and everything, is keep the same energy for everybody, okay? So that way, when you're a candidate or you're one of the makes some dumb shit, right? You have a track record of holding them accountable. The problem that I have is that even though I don't like Trump as much as I don't like Biden or some other old bitch ass witch from what, I don't have any pro People treat people differently and give people leeway and, and favoritism based on who they are and that's just shit. If you truly care about politics and shit, dude, you treat everybody the same way. That's just, Fair. It's fair game, but everybody's always so biased. It's just cringe. Like, it's hard to to back them up and go and go crusade against whoever get because it's just biased. It's lame as fuck. Certain U.S. informants or sources, and that basic. You call Hillary a witch? Yeah, she a bitch ass witch. Yep, yep. And she did some. She did a bunch of dumb shit that nobody cared to double to to, to, to look at and to, and to investigate in. Oh, because, oh, because, fuck, because what? Because, because the part of the, of the accepted party? Fuck that shit, man. What is this shit, bro? Like the intelligence what a joke, man. did consider this really important stuff that should not have been hanging out at Mar-a-Lago. Right now, a grand jury in D.C. is still hearing all this evidence. As president, Donald Trump didn't just say outrageous things. <gasps> he acted in ways no! that no president ever had before. No, I'm my t-shirt. I, I coffee on it. Now that he's no longer in office, it's time to figure out if any of that unprecedented behavior was also illegal. And if it was, what to do about it.
that zero. You want to, you want a base fucking take? I'm gonna give you a base fucking take, okay? The same way that even though I was memeing on Trump and I was trolling him, dude, and I didn't give a fuck at the time, okay, and still don't give a fuck that much. When they were like, yo guys, here at Twitter, we care about rules, we care about doing the right thing. So what we did today is that we banned Trump. That's a victory for us. Because we're so unbiased and cool. We apply the terms of service consistently across the board. When a bunch of, dude, a bunch of people do a bunch of shit over and over again. And they come out, guys, oh, oh, you guys don't like, oh, you guys don't like Trump? Don't worry, I got you. We banned them because of this. Fuck you, man. You're just, it's just cringe. It's just cringe. It, dude, keep the same energy for other for this other people regardless of what candidate or what fucking what party they represent keep the same energy otherwise you look like a fucking cock you look like a bitch ass stop looking make everybody look bad you make people look stupid yo is that that hard to understand a hunter biden's laptop i don't know what, what that is what did what did what is did, what is the laptop. I don't know what that is. It's a story with suggestions of a scandal, one that could threaten a presidency. At its center is a laptop. The computer belongs to Hunter Biden, son of Joe, the U.S. Isn't the guy who smokes crack? That guy's gonna. That guy's gonna bust him. No toss in this. President. I think this guy smokes crack. That's kind of wicked. It's been all the talk, particularly in Trump-supporting circles, for years. By the way, whatever happened to Hunter? Where the hell is he? Now Republicans in Congress want to investigate the Hunter Biden affair. So what are the allegations against him? What could be <coughs> the implications for his father, the U.S. president? The story was reported in the right-wing New York Post before the 2020 election. It went like this. It was 2019 and Joe Biden was soon to run against Donald Trump for the presidency. Hunter Biden went into a computer repair shop. He wanted to recover data from some broken laptop computers, but he never returned to pick them up. Eventually, the computer repair man, John Paul McIsaac, looked at what was on the laptop. Yo, yo. As he says, he was allowed to under a so-called 90 day abandonment procedure. What did the computer Oh! Did a repairman find? Well, quite a lot. Homemade pornography, embarrassing photos. That's fine. But it was the email traffic that turned this into a more serious matter. Wait a minute. Hunter Biden used to be on the board of a Ukrainian energy company called Burisma. And John Paul McIsaac claims the laptop contained evidence that Hunter Biden used his connection with his father to help in this role, something that would amount to corruption. One email. Yeah, but it doesn't matter though. It doesn't matter though because this is like a candidate of the, like the left, right? So it's like a, it's like a, what is it, a libertarian or like a democracist or whatever, right? So they can do crime. They're just fine, right? If 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 Trump has a bad hair day, he's drinking coffee, raid his home and get all the all the juice out of his home. But if Biden is doing some smoking crack cocaine and he's got some shit and some corruption. He's chilling because he's from the left, yo. He's he's he could be chilling. He's chilling, bro. He be bro, bro chill. Let's not do anything, man. Consultant so to fucking the far dumb, red. Bro. Dear Hunter, thank you for inviting me to DC and giving an opportunity to meet your father and I spend think it's some time stupid. together. The announcement of my guy's upcoming travels now. Now, my guy, Hunter refers to his father as my guy or the chairman or the big guy. Joe what? Biden says he's never done. Yeah, I'm mostly centrist. Okay. I don't, I think both sides are stupid, okay? I think, I think, I think, I think overall, as a general rule of thumb, I think the right is just dead ass stupid. And they do it, most of the time. But the left is just oversensitive, hypocritical cucks. Like actual cuck lordery. And I think, I think, and I think both sides gotta stop. I think maybe, maybe, Abolish both parties. Make one party. Call it, uh, I don't fucking know. Call it, bro. It's the great party called Cement. Discussed his son's overseas know. dealings with him. He's dismissed the whole story as Russian disinformation. McIsaac, the computer repair man, who says he voted for Donald Trump in the 2016 election, made a copy of the laptop's contents 
and then told the FBI in December 2019. The story eventually made its way to the New York Post. Ah, oh boy. It was seized upon by Mr. Trump and his supporters, but it didn't make the impact that might have been expected. The FBI made clear their concerns about Russian disinformation ahead of the 2020 election. Subsequently, what? Facebook and Twitter restricted the spread of the laptop story on their platforms. Joe Biden won the 2020 election. The laptop story wasn't given the scale of coverage that might have been expected, but it's now back in the spotlight. Repub Interesting, yeah. Wow, that's crazy. That is, that is crazy that a possible liability slash problem. Yo, yeah, maybe this is biased. Maybe it's biased. But it, could, it seems to me that this potentially uh, warrants some attention and isn't given, right? Yet some fucking porn star from left field and whatever payment or some shit years later comes out of the blue before the election and oh, send the guys to his house, raid the home, fuck him up, guys. Put him in fucking court, but these guys, ah, they were just smoking crack. Fuck it, dude. Bro, he was doing corruption while smoking crack out the wazoo and then meth out the fucking pipe. Ah, one of us. One of the boys. <laughs> Shit, one of the boys. So dumb. So fucking dumb, bruh. What a fucking joke, dude. Eh, what a joke, government, dude. Fuck everybody, dude. Fuck the left, fuck the right. Republican fucking democracist. I don't give a fuck what your name is. I don't give no. I think it's all dumb. Yo, what a joke.